The issue is that buildings are a major polluter in terms of carbon emissions and the built environment is responsible for up to 40% of the carbon emissions that are put into the atmosphere. And the situation is, is that we've got to start to look at this seriously. We've been talking about it for a long while and a lot of people deny what's going on. But the issue is that this is something that we need to address and if we don't do that, there'll be serious consequences. As a company, we are trying to look at how we can mitigate the impact of climate change. We've developed the technology that allows people to create a very accurate, what's called a digital twin of a building. So this is a, a very close replica of how the building should be. Buildings account for 40% of global energy consumption, which is massive and quite significant. Now, recent standards are starting to allow us to design buildings better. We're moving towards near zero energy buildings. So IES's digital twin technology uses physics-based software and real data from the building, as well as advanced technologies such as machine learning and artificial intelligence. And we bring all those things together to create a 3D replica of the existing building to be able to look at how it's performing in real time and then help to optimize that performance in real time. IES have worked with the University of Glasgow campus now for a number of years, and we've created a digital twin of the entire campus. So that includes the buildings and the network, so the heat network, the electricity network, as well as the assets. So if there's any electricity um, renewable sources like photovoltaics, or if there's any EV charging stations, things like that, the assets across the campus. The university was one of the first universities in the UK to declare a climate emergency. When it comes to changing a building stock to get it to net zero, you have to know what's in the buildings and you have to know what consumes the power. IES have given us the tools to be able to do that. So our main goal is net zero by 2030. On the digital twinning side, what we do with IES is fairly future-proofing, I would say, in that we take information from our buildings, from loads of different sensor points, from systems that perhaps never integrated before, and they put them into one place. So we can action change, not just by knowing what consumes power and when, but how power is consumed. From a financial and business point of view, students are now looking to institutions to be green, to be what it is that they want, and they respect the fact that we are doing as much as we can to come up with the right solutions. The students actually have had quite um, an important role in the project um, because we have a lot of buildings on this campus. But what they've been able to do is master's students um, over the last couple of years have been able to take very, very basic compliance models and deliver eight buildings that are a much more detailed level of analysis and start to produce scenarios to show what we could do to, to be able to lower energy consumption. But the great thing about IES is that it's bringing in all sorts of different facets like thermal comfort, how, you know, how comfortable are the users of the building, outside temperatures, um, energy consumption figures, air quality. So there's a huge range of different parameters that the students are looking at. SEC want to be one of the world's leading exhibition centres and to do that they need to be carbon friendly and carbon neutral. So the project was really about helping them to understand where all their carbon is being used through their buildings which is mainly driven by their energy use and from that we want to go through a feasibility study to identify options of how we can decarbonise all the different event spaces and create an integrated energy network which not only helps them deliver really good events but also make sure that we use the most efficient means of generating heat, power and lighting for that space. So whilst the, the buildings in the Scottish event campus are some of the most iconic in the country, they're also some of the most complex. In the months leading up to COP26, IES supported SSE in, in various ways. We, we joined them on site to support the gathering of data. We helped them create the individual building digital twins and we created the campus level digital twin of the Scottish Event Campus. A big part of the problem we have in the carbon produced by buildings is the performance gap. Things are designed to meet a certain specification, but when it comes to actual usage, 
they actually don't perform underneath that. So the digital twins are really critical because we need to now actually look at how those existing buildings are failing against their original designs so then we can really target the waste. So for SSC at the moment, it's a critical part of having a strategic partnership with IES because we want to hone our ability to make these digital twins and support smart cities, smart campuses and smart places. We've been involved in two major projects recently, one with Glasgow University, another one with the Nanyang Technical University in uh, Singapore. With the NTU, the initial kind of, just looking at how the building was performing against our digital twin, they looked at 21 buildings in the site and we had managed to identify 10% savings just by using our software to look at the information coming from those buildings. But then for the individual building, they wanted to look at what they could do to decarbonise and what would be the approach. So we prepared a decarbonisation roadmap for them that they could look at to see what they could do. Over just a 10 year period, we identified 31% savings. And as a consequence of that, they were delighted because the double benefit of that is not only decarbonising, but reducing their energy costs, which gives them money they can reinvest back into the university. One of the approaches we're taking is that we're currently talking to a lot of the Fortune 500 companies and other large companies that are around the world. They can then help disseminate our technology. I think the future for IES is to keep to the mission that we've got, right? And I think that's kind of the key thing, is to provide the tools that people can use in order to make the built environment energy efficient.